Welcome to another ultralight airplane design video from the ultralight airplane workshop. This is a follow on video to the part one video that I did on a touch panel instrument display for the UWS-4 ultralight airplane. And what I described in that display was probably good enough for what I was trying to display. But I kept thinking about more things I might want to do or how I might want to change things. And in addition, I found a guideline from the FAA on how to do glass cockpit panels. So I read through that. That gave me some ideas of what should be changed. And so putting it all together, I've made another display and I thought I'd talk about it a little bit. And in case you'd like to look at that FAA document, it's called Human Factors Design Guidelines for Multifunction Displays. And if I don't forget, I'll put a link down in the description for this video so you can go look at it if you want to. It's pretty useful. I didn't agree with everything in it, but it was pretty useful. One thing that bothered me a little bit about the display I had in part one was that I had kind of a forward looking display with something that was like an artificial horizon. So we had sky and the ground, we had a horizon here. So this would pitch up and down, it would roll. But then around that, I had more of a top down view that was the compass view and navigation and such. So I had those kind of two together and I can see where as you're maneuvering that could be a little bit disoriented. You're trying to have a mental picture top down and at the same time a mental picture looking forward. So that could be a little bit confusing. I'm not sure how to completely get away from it but I'm trying to do that a little bit here. So I still have the artificial horizon with the sky and the ground but for the compass I'm trying to laying it out on the ground. So I'm trying to visualize the ground here where this line is the horizon. Straight down below us is this circle here. So that would be vertically straight down. And then I'm trying to superimpose 180 degrees of a compass here. So to the port side to the left of us would be 90 degrees from straight ahead. And then over here to the right again would be 90 degrees from straight ahead. These check marks here would be where the horizon would normally be if you were in cruise flight. And of course, wings level would be these cross bar here on this plus sign. So vertical would be where this vertical part of this plus sign is. The wings level would be where this cross piece is on the plus sign. As you can see here, the nose of the airplane is pointing just about 11 degrees. Here's north, here's east, and here is west. I'm not showing what's behind the aircraft here. I guess the little bit would be shown behind it if you point the nose down because this would raise up the horizon. So this circle here, which is directly below the airplane, would start raising up toward this, where the airplane nose is pointed. And we would start seeing back behind the airplane a little bit more. But what I wanted to do here is have the other 180 degrees of our compass so I could show things that were behind the airplane. And I'll get a little more to that here in the future. So I think I'm gonna keep the top part of the compass right here, just below the horizon. So as you point the nose down, this compass would elongate. And I might even have more of this arc start curling around. So as you point the nose farther and further down, you can see more arcs, so it would start curling around back behind. I haven't decided on that. It's just something I'm thinking about. And as you can see, I'm thinking of put more things on the ground. So to keep from obstructing what I'm trying to look at down here on the ground, I've moved some of the data displays that had been down in these two corners up here. So all the just the numeric values would be up here. I haven't really changed much over here on the airspeed. I did remove a little line that was there and move this arrow over a little bit closer. Did the same thing over here. And by the way, this used to be the vertical speed indicator in part one video. I've changed to cylinder head temperature too. And another thing I'm thinking about over here is having an option so you could actually have two bar gauges over here. The middle point between them would be right here. So there would be one bar gauge up here, one bar gauge down here. So you could have something like exhaust gas temperature on one, cylinder head temperature on another, or maybe two cylinder head temperatures. You could pick what combination you want to have over here. And then I still might do the same thing over here on the left side where airspeed indicator is maybe half of it. And then another bar displayed down below it. I haven't decided on that. I probably won't do that. I'll probably just keep the airspeed indicator by itself since it's fairly important. Now I did change one thing over here that I talked about in part one. I put some icons over here and I've added a checklist button. So you could click this checklist button and it'll bring up tabs for various checklists. Like you might have the walk around checklist, 
the engine start checklist, the climb checklist, the cruise checklist, the descent checklist, the shutdown checklist, things like that. I still have pretty much the same organization here. So this would be the flight instrumentation. So that's what we are on here. I've just kind of have an outline of a low wing airplane here. Might give you an option of maybe a high wing or something else. I couldn't think of a good engine icon, so it still says engine there. I don't like using this speaker for comms, but that's there for now. Of course, this lightning bolt means electrical. This gear has become a fairly typical icon to mean settings, and I haven't gotten rid of the testing yet. I still have the clock in the same spot. I think I may end up moving that over in the middle. Now I still have the pitch degrees up here at the top. I have the roll degrees over here on the left. I haven't changed anything on altimeter, the barometer, the fuel, outside air temperature. That's still pretty much the same. Transmission frequency, I haven't done anything with that yet. RPM, CHT, those are all still about the same. Our actual ground track, I'm probably going to try to find a better symbol for that. I did change the color. As the wind changes, of course, that would change our ground tack too. And speaking of wind, I'm trying to come up with an icon to show wind over here. So right now I've got these four lines that curl around and I've got the wind speed above that. And then as the wind changes its direction, that would move around on the compass. So if the wind were directly behind us, it would be right here. If it was directly off of our starboard, it would be over here. And of course, port would be here. I haven't changed anything with navigation yet. That's still pretty much the same. I'll have to think about it a little bit more. I think the pink might end up causing me some problems because of some other stuff I'm gonna put in here. Uh, so that's a placeholder for now. And by the way, talking about wind again, this is the old symbol. I had a blue arrow. If I like this icon, I'll probably switch it out. So I'm looking at these displays, kind of comparing these two icons to see how much I like them. I haven't figured it out yet. And as you can see down here on this ground display, I'm starting to think about putting some navigation aids on this ground. So like this would be a railroad track. This is very similar to you see on a VFR chart. This is a four lane highway, a divided highway coming across here. This would be a grass airstrip. I've actually have two different symbols here I'm playing with. This is the regular kind of magenta symbol. But, and here's the problem, I have the same thing up here. And by the way, I think what I'm going to do is, as things get nearer the horizon, they kind of get more squashed from top to bottom, just like they would in actual looking out your cockpit window. So I've kind of squashed these down, so now they're kind of oval shaped. So this one has a little white circle that borders the magenta to try to make it stand out more. I'm not sure I like that. I might switch to black, see if I like that a little bit better. The other thing is to use a lighter colored ground color all the way. Or another option is to make it look more like it would in real life. As you look at the horizon, because of humidity in the air, it gets kind of gray, gets a little hazy. So instead of going as dark color, it might be better to have the same lightness all the way to the top, to this horizon, but to change it to more of a hazy kind of a grayish color. I'm gonna play with that a little bit more. One thing that I really started out with really want on here instead of navigation aids is I want to put locations of towers. In ultralight airplanes, we're frequently flying fairly low, you know, 400 feet, 500 feet. But I wanted to know where towers are because we have lots of towers that are higher than 500 feet. So I want to have those on here. And if you're on a collision course with the tower, I would know what the tower height is too. Then I can sound a warning and then alarm. And speaking of that, I was looking at that document from the FAA on guidelines and they actually use the word alarm to mean several different things. One is like something that needs your attention but not an emergency, and one that is an emergency and needs your immediate attention. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that terminology a little bit better. But for me, warning meant something that needs your attention but it's not urgent, and alarm, instead of being general, means you need to look at this thing now. So I may have to change my terminology there. So after I added the towers, I thought, well, having some navigation aids, like where airports are, where railroads are, uh, I haven't put power lines in here, but power lines are a good navigation aid, and of course roads are, and maybe have town locations. So I've almost got a VFR sectional once I get all that in there. I will definitely get towers in there. The rest of it, I'm not sure. I'll have to think about that. And then I got to think, and what if I put ADSB in in here? Now that we have ADSB available, especially ADSB in, that would help me locate airplanes that might be a problem. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to come up with a way of showing 
airplanes on this display and kind of give an indication of which direction they're flying or whether they may be a problem. So I'm playing a little bit with an icon for airplanes. Obviously what I did is I took this icon to make this one. So this is low wing airplane. I won't know if airplanes are low wing or not. It's just the icon I decided to use. And I put a window on there meaning it's headed toward me. So this kind of icon means it's headed toward me. So if it shows up over here and it looks like this, instead of passing to my left, which you might think of by looking at the display, it means it's really headed directly at me. Now, I don't know if you can see the details on this one, but this one is actually the rear view of an airplane. You can see his rudder here. So that means he's headed away from me. This icon over here means he's headed to the left. Flipped it around, it means he's headed to the right. But it's really the color that indicates whether it's a hazard. You know, this one, if I think there's going to be an intercept course somewhere up in front of me, I would turn him red. If I don't think there's going to be a collision or intercept, I would leave him yellow if it's going to be close or green if I don't think it's an issue. For example, this guy here is headed away from us. So he's not an issue at all. This guy's headed towards us and just a little bit to the right. So there's a collision possibility with him. He's just a little bit above us. I actually ignore these numbers here. I'm just playing with what they might look like, how I put them near the icon. So there would be a number here saying if the airplane is ascending or descending and how far away they are. I'd probably only pop these numbers up if there was an issue, if there's a, an idea that we might have a collision. And then also the size of the icon would give you an indication of how close or how far away they are. This is the biggest, he's the closest to us. This one's fairly small. Both of these are actually almost the same size. So they're almost all the same distance from me. If it was really, really small, that means it's farther away. And this one here is red, which means there's a very high probability of a collision. Now he's way over almost 90 degrees to my starboard. It's red. If there's a collision, that means he's moving really, really fast. Another thing, going back to the airports, in order to avoid flying into Class D airspace within the lateral bounds of the Class D airspace, so we don't actually infringe and get in trouble, I'll probably put circles here to help you know how close you're getting to it to avoid it. And we do that for Class C and Class B too. Now, another thing I like about this display, instead of having a circle here in the middle, we have a whole lot more room to put our information in here. And that's what allowed us to go ahead and put map features in here. On the previous display, let me go back up to the one of those. On the previous display, there was some room, but trying to put map information on here, like a VFR sectional chart, would make this pretty crowded, a little harder to see. So I like this a little bit better. Now you might want more than one version of this display. You might want to have a really stripped down version, simple one, maybe it only has a compass and obstructions on this down here and almost nothing else. So down in settings, I might let you have several different versions on this display and you would switch between them using this icon down here. This is supposed to look like an eyeball and what it means is switching displays. So you might have a series of displays, maybe three, maybe four. So each push of the icon would go to the next one. So you might have one that has all kinds of stuff on it, maybe almost a full VFR sectional, maybe even more data points up here. You might have the one that's really stripped down, maybe it only has obstructions showing down here. And you might have one in between because it could get really cluttered down here and you might not be able to see what you want to see. So you could make a version that really gives you what you're mostly interested in. And probably the last thing we'll talk about here is I did a little more rethinking of the angle of attack and the yaw slip skid display. So let's look at that real quick. Now, if you remember before, let's go back up to what I had in part one. So here's what I had in part one. So if you're just barely pointed up, you have a green arrow. As you get a greater and greater angle of attack, it goes to yellow. And then once you've stalled, it's red and flashing. And then slip skid. If you're just doing slips, it's green and it can go green all the way out. If you're doing skids, it'll start out green a little bit and then pretty rapidly turn to yellow and then to red, meaning you're in a dangerous condition. You could actually go into a spin pretty easily. Well, let's look at what I've changed. So I've decided to change from a series of arrows to just a lengthening arrow. So this green one here would be, you're just starting to pitch up a little bit. You still have a pretty small angle of attack. 
There would be nothing here if you're at basically your cruise attitude. And then as you're starting to increase that, that angle of attack, the arrow would get longer and then change color to yellow. And as you're getting into dangerous territory, it'll get even longer, change to red, and be flashing. And all the way up here means you're in a full stall and you're in trouble. And then I'm doing something very similar here for the slip skid. So if you're in a slip, it's just green, and the greater angle you get, your yaw angle as you get into that slip, this chevron basically will start getting longer and longer and longer. And I've kept it somewhat transparent so you can see through it because you can actually see the compass here through this green. And this green up here would be the same way. But when it changes to yellow, it's no, no longer semi-transparent. I want you to see it and see there's an issue. So this yellow will get longer until you're really in the dangerous spot and then it turns red and keeps getting longer. I think I like this a little bit better than doing it this way. It's something I'm going to play with. And in addition, I will probably get rid of this wind arrow here, showing the wind direction. I just don't think it's necessary. I think putting it up here on the compass and then showing how strong it is is probably good enough. Now, one thing I might do is if the wind is in a direction or strength that's probably more than the ultralight can handle, I might switch to a yellow flashing. And if it's just outrageous, like hurricane, I'll switch it to the red, but you shouldn't be out in a hurricane anyway. But that's something I could do here is let's say you have a crosswind that's 25 knots. Then it's probably a good idea to have either yellow or red. It would depend on your skill level and what the ultralight is capable of handling. And by the way, I drew this before I decided I wanted to move all the numerical data up here. So this has been moved up and this has been moved up. Well guys, that's all I had for this video. You can see how things are kind of evolving and changing. I could go back to some of what I had in part one, maybe mix it with a little bit here in part three. I haven't decided yet, but it's a lot of fun to think about. Oh, let me show you something else. I got a 10 inch display. Oh, you can actually see the reflection here. Let's see if we can use that. Ooh, that'd be cool. There you go. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking of using this for my display. I'd mentioned in part one that I want to use a seven inch display, but it's going to be awfully small. This 10 inch seems to be much easier based on the size that I have on some of these touch areas. I think it'll work much better, but that probably means I'm going to have to raise the top of my instrument panel oh, about an inch in order to make room for this. Seven inch would fit fine. This 10 inch just kind of almost fits. So I probably have to make a little bit of modification. So that means the angle of the view angle of the ground from the pilot's sight line, looking down about 15 degrees, 20 degrees is probably going to be a little bit less than I wanted, but not a whole lot. But I think it'll still be pretty cool. Well guys, thanks for watching. Until next time.